Today on the Extreme Channel, we're doing a review on Joker from DC's Batman series. That's right, this is the Joker. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about Joker since Prime 1 released their new Joker, but everyone's forgotten about this one. How much you want to bet the DC fanboys just shit a brick? Hey, thanks for tuning in. My name is Mr. X. Obviously, this is not Joker. This is from Sideshow Collectibles. This is Melavestros... It's in the title. We'll call him Marv. So this is from their Court of the Deadline. It's a specific line that they own the copyright to that they created. And it's all about the underworld. I own a number of pieces from them. I've only actually... My voice just cracked. I've only actually reviewed one of them. You can check out this Odium piece right here. All of them follow that same theme of the underworld and they're all pretty cool to be honest with you. So today we're gonna take an in-depth look at him in the extreme review. And Marv here is actually kind of the trickster. That's why he's dressed as a clown. He's a magician, he's a trickster. He's kind of always up to something, kind of uh, playing both sides if you will. Not that way, both sides. And I had never had any intention of buying him. I actually purchased him after I owned one other Court of the Dead piece, but I was able to get him for a steal. We'll talk about that in value, because during this extreme review, if you haven't watched before, we have categories. Each category, we give a one through five ranking. And as always, we start with concept. We're gonna jump right in today because I'm actually traveling right now, so I wanted to get content for you guys daily up through Christmas. So not only are we gonna do Marv today, but stay tuned because we're gonna do some other Court of the Dead pieces. But let's start with Marv's concept. And honestly, it's pretty cool, pretty different what they did. A lot of these have a very similar themed base. It's kind of this blue rock, but Marv's base has so much going on. You see a lot of magical elements, whether they're spell books or candles that have melted in wax, a human skull, a dagger, a feather. There is so much different stuff going on in this base. You see almost some skulls trying to come out of some of those books. Uh, almost some chemicals for potions. And I wanna say he's perched on, it looks like a tombstone with some more skulls. There are tons of skulls on this to really let you know he is all about the underworld. And he's in a crazy outfit, which is also lined with skulls. And as you move up, he's holding two magical parchments. You gotta assume these are parchments with spells because they're actually turning into some little flying around creatures, which is kind of nuts. We'll come back to that in Paint and Sculpt. Part of Marv's insides are actually nasty, bloody, skull-type stomach. Again, I don't even know what that is. This came out of someone's mind, and, and I'm staring at it. I've had it for years. I still don't know what it is. He has a traditional clown outfit that's been modernized and really taken to the underworld. Again, more skulls on the collar. You have skulls on his head with just a very creepy, sinister look on his face. I think this concept tells a fantastic story. You can definitely tell if you knew nothing about this character, you would know that he's up to something, that he's a trickster. You know, obviously they made up their own source content, but I think they took the story and they sold it really well. This is pretty damn cool. I'm really impressed with the concept of this piece. Honestly, I think it's a five out of five on this. And granted, it's hard to judge because like I said, there's no really source content. Now design, we're not gonna show the unboxing and assembly because I did that years ago but there are tons of pieces. I wanna say there's 15 to 20 pieces. Almost all this stuff keys into the base separately, but it was color coded, which is kind of nice. I remember when I first put them up, I think this hand was actually turned sideways because it worked that way as well. And someone had to point out on Facebook that, hey, you got that in wrong. That's what she said. Let's measure him really quick. So he's a nice compact premium format, which is a fancy way to say uh, four times smaller than a real life version. He's about nine and a half inches wide. This obviously sticks out more. The tallest point is probably the wing of this little creature, which is 20 inches. And then he's maybe eight inches deep, maybe a little bit more. Now on my particular piece, this is the regular version. There are no switch outs, but the exclusive version that I didn't buy has a different portrait. So all the versions have this portrait right here, which is my favorite, but the exclusive had the, another skull, in case you didn't have enough skulls on the statue. Now, unfortunately that did leave a nasty seam line where you put the portrait in, check it out right here. But I'm okay with it because you only see it from the side and you would only display this from the front. At least me, some people are weird. So I think the design's a four out of five. I think it's done really well. There's a lot going on. It's pretty dynamic. And other than that seam line, everything, the engineering worked really well. I right, paint and sculpt on this piece. We'll dive in with some video because there was so much to color and I really got to give them a lot of props. 
Um, while I, I don't think the paint is amazing, it's still done well, but there's probably about a hundred different colors on here. All right, so let's dive in on this guy and there's so much going on. Now the rock on the bottom looks fine. I don't know if I like that blue powder all over it. And there's some things here that the sculpt isn't 100% clearly defined, some medallions, some of that wax. I appreciate what they tried to do, but it, it's almost too much. However, there's a lot of detail in it. I think the amount of colors is overwhelming, but even the books, look at the pages on the book. They look fantastic. These skulls and different things on the bottom here. I wonder how many skulls are actually on this piece. There's probably a close north of 50. Some detail in the back that you just don't see, the cracked tombstone. And the amount of colors they used is, is like I said, it's almost overwhelming. But what's really impressive about it is it's decently clean. And I think that's the Court of the Dead uh, symbol, almost like a pirate symbol. Then they have some of that blue speckle in his uh, boots here. Again, just a ton of detail. He's wearing high heels, which to each his own. Maybe he does go both ways. Here's the cape. It's a little dirty, uh, which I like. I think it goes with the statue. I don't know if it was meant to be that way or just shipped to me or I just haven't cleaned it in two years. It's kind of a cheap cape when it comes to mixed media, but again, it's on the back, so you're not really taking a close look at it. There are those skulls that are like embodied into his body. And here's them on the back underneath the cape. I like stuff like that. Reminds me of some of the, uh, the Femto from Prime 1. The bloody mess. More skulls on this armor on the side. And he's got these chains down here. Everything is sculpted but that cape. Your classic clown outfit up here. And here's those parchments. Now, this looks a little cheap right here, this plastic. I understand, so I'm not sure what material, maybe it's PVC, it's pliable. Um, if it was uh, resin or something like that, I'm sure it would have broken shipping. So I do understand why they did it that way. Then check out his collar. There's the more skulls I was talking about. I never know what this is called. Whenever I review a Pennywise statue, this collar right here more skulls on his uh, clown uniform right here. And I like the contrast of the colors. There's just too many of them, I think, if you look at it like that. Portrait is done phenomenally, both the paint and the sculpt on it. Very creepy, very scary. So I think there's a lot of good things on here. You could really spend so much time uh, staring at this statue and finding something new each time. So with that paint, like I said, it almost seems messy and maybe that's because there's too many colors. Uh, it's not done bad, so I think it's right in the middle. I think it's a three out of five. I like the sculpt more, however. I think they did a really nice job. There's so much intricate detail. It must have taken hours to sculpt this. I assume it was digitally sculpted. But uh, I think it's a four out of five on the sculpt. This is a really impressive piece. And it's even more impressive for the value that I got it for, the price I got it for, which we're not gonna judge it based off that. We'll judge it based off the retail price, which was $600. And they made 1,250 of these. 500 were the exclusive with that additional portrait. And then 750 were the version I had. So $600 for a small quarter scale is a lot. There's no doubt. I was lucky enough to nab him for 350. I got him in a bulk deal with multiple pieces. So 350, it's uh, crazy. I think I, I got it. Gamora, if I recently aired that from Sideshow for 350. That's the going number right now. At 350, this is a five out of five on the value. However, at 600, I think that's a ripoff. You know, this is a lesser known character. Sideshow owns the rights to it, so they didn't have to pay a licensing fee. Honestly, I think the value is a two out of five if you get them at retail, which nowadays you can get them pretty much under retail. So if you're gonna buy this and you did buy it at retail, you probably will lose money, but it's okay if statues depreciate over time. Now, does this have the X factor? Is this a five out of five statue? It's not. Uh, it's pretty damn cool though. Uh, because the character is so different, I don't think a lot of people have a ton of ties to him. And you know, if you're gonna buy him, you wouldn't buy him as a standalone piece. I mean, you may, but Probably not. It would probably be part of that entire line, which he looks fantastic with. But I think when it's all said and done, it's a three out of five statue overall. It's very nice. Uh, it's done well. 
I appreciate it. I'm glad I have it in my collection, but it's not the most amazing piece that people are drawn to. So again, we kind of fast forwarded through things today. Hell, maybe you fast forwarded. I watch stuff at 1.5 times speed on YouTube. Try it, it's in your options. But in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button because we're going to do more Court of the Dead stuff. Hit that like button. Check out some of these other videos because we drop daily content.